नमस्ते एवरीवन वेलकम टू फिजिक्स क्लास वी हैव बीन डिस्कसिंग अबाउट ड्यूअल नेचर ऑफ मैटर सो वी हैव टू यूज क्वांटम नेचर ऑफ लाइट वाइल डिस्कसिंग अबाउट फोटो इलेक्ट्रिक इफेक्ट यू हैव सीन व्हाट इज फोटो इलेक्ट्रिक इफेक्ट वेन लाइट ऑफ सुटेबल फ्रीक्वेंसी इज मेड टू इंसिडेंट ऑन सर्टेन मेटल्स सर्फेस इलेक्ट्रॉन्स कम आउट ऑफ द मेटल दैट इज कॉल्ड फोटो इलेक्ट्रिक एमिशन emission of electrons from the surface of a metal when uh, um light is made to fall on this namaste i uh, hope you are doing well now today we will continue the discussion we will see what einstein by using the theory of max planck that is uh, that is quantum theory how did he explain photoelectric effect hallwork and linard along with the uh, henry church they gave some observations saying that uh, uh, many things like uh, by changing intensity frequency and all what changes occur in photoelectric effect so we will uh, for first uh, some 20 minutes we will have uh, uh, that uh, discussion on uh, uh, the experimental observations then we will go to einstein's explanation okay by using quantum theory right so we have again pen and paper keep on drawing it as many times you draw more confidence you will get so you have a vacuum chamber a evacuated tube and uh, it is uh, connected to two electrodes you know this this is uh, which window quartz window because you are going to put uh, ultraviolet light over this so i don't uh, name the or we will finish it this is quartz window window and uh, this is a uh, ultraviolet light because it is energetic and uh, less harmful and uh, this is uh, evacuated uh, tube evacuated tube okay then um, uh, here this is connected here and here you have an uh, anode and here you have cathode and uh, there is a commutator key here with three switches uh, two gaps and uh, this is connected over here and uh, this is uh, connected over here and there is a direct connection to the third key like this and this is to the battery for the accelerating potential so here is a resistance or a wire of uh, rheostat and here is a high tension battery okay and uh, of course this is connected to the variable end where you can vary this this is not connected this is connected and here is a voltmeter needed to measure the emf how much stopping potential you have given and this is micrometer to read the current circuit is over so in usual cases this is connected but we don't show any uh, connection actually this is connected and in order to measure the reverse potential that is the stopping potential we connect the to change the connection here that's all and now the cathode is given negative because you know from the cathode if you come like this and like this it is given negative and this is given positive yes fast moving electrons like this so electrons like this okay now here one thing you have to know is uh sir whether energy needed to remove the electrons is same for all the electrons there may be some different because we know that when we reverse this potential so i will directly jump into the topic now right i don't give you all the introduction uh when the electrons uh, uh, so when the light falls on the photosensitive surface electrons come out do all electrons use the same amount of energy to come out we call it as work function work function is a constant for a metal and uh, we say that it is almost same but there may be a small difference in the electrons so when the electrons come like this you stop the electrons and uh, ask them how much energy you have used to come out sir i have used some uh, 2 joules of energy or 2 into 10 to the power minus 19 joules of energy another says sir i have used 1.99 into 10 to the power minus 19 joules of energy another says 2.01 into 10 to the power minus 19 joules of energy so it uses little different energies why it is so because electrons may be in different levels inside the metal 
Some electrons may need more energy to come out. Some electrons which are very close to the surface may need little less amount of energy to come out. So, whatever the kinetic energy they have, there may be a small difference. This was what I was asking you that you may have some doubts while uh, saying the stopping potential. When, while explaining the stopping potential, we say, suppose this is positive, of course, all the electrons which are emitted will come to the anode and you will get a sufficient good current, right? Current will, because electrons will flow and they will show the current. Now, when the, uh, this is reversed, when the anode potential is reversed, instead of giving positive to anode in order to attract the electrons, if you start giving negative to the anode in order to repel the electrons, we know that when it is uh, uh, plus 2 volt, right, plus 2 volt, electrons can come here. When it is plus 1 volt, electrons can come here. When it is uh, 0 volt, electrons can come here because they have enough an amount of energy. Even though this is not attracting when the potential is 0 volt, electrons they have themselves some energy and they can reach this uh, anode. When you give minus 1, some electrons can't reach. What do you mean by that? Minus 1 potential, if you want to convert it into kinetic energy, ki so you know that potential difference is work done in taking the charge, W by Q. So, any battery will have a potential difference. How much work it will do in taking the charge? What is the work done? Work done is charge into potential. So, if you can stop some electrons with the minus 1 volt, what is the kinetic energy? Charge of electron E, 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs, that is the charge of electron, into potential, stopping potential. But minus 1 volt cannot stop all the electrons, only few electrons. How come it is? If Because if all the electrons use the same amount of energy to come out and use the same remaining energy as kinetic energy, then all electrons must be stopped by one negative potential, isn't it? How come this minus 1 volt can stop few electrons, not all electrons? The reason is this one. Even though we say that the work function is a constant, some electrons may require more energy to come out. Some electrons may require, which are very close to the surface, may require less energy to come out. So what happens? There will be some difference in the kinetic energy. So you may use 70 rupees for your uh, traveling uh, expense and your friend may use 75 rupees because he may need 5 rupees for auto charge to come to the bus stop. And there may be few such differences and another person may use uh, 80 rupees for traveling because he may use 10 rupees for traveling extra with the auto with some luggage and all. So there may be some difference around 70 rupees. So whatever is left with the, uh, in the packet, pocket, if all the, if your friend and yourself and uh, some other friends all have been given with the 150 rupees, remaining money will not be exactly 80 rupees for all. It will be 75, 85, something like this. So around this. So these electrons will have different kinetic energy. Therefore, the photoelectric current suddenly doesn't become zero at a particular stopping potential. If it is made minus 2 volt, this is made minus volt, that may be able to stop few more electrons, few more energetic electrons. And if it is made minus 3 volt, uh, suppose this is the last potential which can stop all the electrons. This is called stopping potential because all the electrons, uh, some, some of the electrons which are stopped by minus 1 volt can also be stopped by minus 3 volt because this is sufficiently stronger. So it will give more kinetic energy. So more kinetic energies, uh, kinetic energetic electrons can also be stopped by minus 3 volt means when the photoelectric current becomes zero, this becomes the stopping potential. So, don't be under the impression that all the electrons are suddenly stopped by a single potential which is lower one. It is a little by little and one greatest potential can stop all the electrons. Now, minus 4 volt, however, it can stop all the electrons. So, this becomes the minimum negative potential which can stop all the electrons. That is why it becomes a stopping potential. So, for a sudden one particular stop, uh, potential, all the electrons don't stop. They will, uh, in groups, they will stop. Some electrons are stopped by a little fair good uh, negative potential. Some more electrons will be stopped by another negative potential. But a fair good negative potential will stop all the electrons, right? So, kinetic energy of emitted electrons is not exactly the same. Different electrons may have different kinetic energies because of their difference in energies to come out, because their positions are different inside the metal. So, some require more energy to come out. Okay, let it be. But what is the dependence now? Which depends on what? That is what we have to discuss. Uh, we have discussed it in the last class, but uh, we will uh, recap it, right? Oh, this is not here. Yes. Now, 
right one dependency is intensity so Hallwork and Renard Leonard did the experiment they came to know that first conclusion they make is photoelectric effect is an instantaneous process what do you mean by instantaneous process as soon as the light falls electrons come out and there is no time gap the time gap needed is very less as soon as the light falls you find the electrons coming out and you can get the current it is an instantaneous process why don't know they don't know the reason for that secondly there is a minimum frequency below which no photoelectrons takes, uh, are emitted right so we are, i'm putting all the things what we have discussed earlier there is a minimum frequency below which no photoelectrons are emitted and above which photoelectrons are emitted and that minimum frequency nu naught is called threshold frequency this is called nu nu is the frequency of radiation f is general frequency uh, symbol but for light or radiation electromagnetic radiation we name it as nu it is not mu mu is this one mu this is nu so nu naught is a, a threshold frequency it is the minimum frequency above which photoelectric emission can take, pla take place and uh, me, uh, below which no photoelectric emission can take place and if you convert this into energy h nu naught that gives uh, the work function and sir as we have there is a minimum frequency don't we have another maximum wavelength because you know e is equal to h c by lambda which is equal to h, h nu so don't you have a, a maximum wavelength yes if you want to make the photoelectric emission to occur increase the frequency beyond the threshold frequency as you increase the frequency beyond threshold frequency the more and more energetic electrons come out but they use the same energy to come out almost okay what about wavelength go on decreasing it because as you decrease the wavelength energy becomes more and more so what do you mean by threshold wavelength the maximum wavelength below which photoelectric emission takes place the minimum frequency above which photoelectric emission take place right if you go on increasing nu naught h nu naught will increase so electrons can come out if you want to increase the energy decrease the wavelength that means from a maximum value go on decreasing the maximum value of wavelength below which photoelectric emission can take place and electrons can come out is called threshold wavelength lambda naught and how to convert this one hc by lambda naught and lambda naught is called threshold wavelength threshold means that critical kind of value threshold minimum value or the junction value threshold wavelength okay electrons come out third conclusion photoelectric current was found to be directly proportional to intensity intensity of incident light and it does not depend on no dependence on frequency nu right photoelectric current was found to be more and more as the uh, intensity of incident light is made more and more and there is no dependence on the frequency when the frequency is increased there was no change in the photoelectric current provided nu is greater than nu naught right if you are taking a suitable frequency which is greater than or equal to threshold frequency then photoelectric emission takes place and you will get photoelectric current but if the frequency uh, sorry if the intensity is increased photoelectric current increases there onwards but if you increase the frequency photoelectric current doesn't increase so if you draw a graph of current photoelectric current versus frequency nu then uh, oh, sorry 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 it is photoelectric current versus intensity intensity of incident light you get a graph starting from zero that you know that is another conclusion and next conclusion that uh, if the anode is made negative what happens is by just switching over the commutator the photoelectric bec current becomes uh, like gets uh, decreasing right or it goes on decreasing it becomes lesser and lesser there is a potential there is a sufficiently larger potential there is a minimum potential above which there is no photoelectric current at all don't say there is no photoelectric emission there is but those electrons can't reach the anode so that minimum negative potential of the anode above that no problem the minimum negative potential of the anode at which photoelectric current becomes zero is called thresh uh, so stopping potential 
the minimum negative potential of the anode at which uh, el the electrons stop reaching the anode and photoelectric current becomes zero. But there is photoelectric emission, but photoelectric current becomes zero because electrons are just checked, uh, checked in or they are just uh, stopped in reaching the anode. And that minimum negative potential is called stopping potential. And stopping potential depends on kinetic energy. And if you convert this EV naught, E into V that gives a kinetic energy of the photoelectrons because uh, potential difference is always work done in taking the charge. Work done is charge into potential. Charge of electron is E. Of course, it is minus E. Let it be into V naught because kinetic energy is always positive. It cannot be negative. So, stopping potential depends on frequency of incident radiation which is equal to H nu and it does not depend on intensity of light. Okay. Now, some graphs. So, shall I rub this and this I will not draw this further. Okay, um, or if I want, I can draw this again. No problem. Right. If you want to draw further graphs, very important graphs. Frequency versus um, what kinetic energy or stopping potential, anything. So kinetic energy versus frequency. Hope you can see this here, right? kinetic energy versus frequency kinetic energy here versus frequency of incident radiation and you know as your father gives more and more money to you you will have more and more money remaining after your journey similarly electrons will uh, use the same energy to come out and remaining energy will be more and more but electrons will start the journey only after a frequency called threshold frequency and there onwards it is just straight line and if this is for metal a in another metal electrons may need more energy to stop uh, sorry to come out new not to they will uh, but the slope of this should be same they should be having you I will tell you why the slope should be same and if you extrapolate this graph this is the work function phi 1 the energy needed to remove the electron from the first metal and if you do this here this is the work function of the second metal phi 2 so a graph of kinetic energy versus uh, mm, um, what um, this one frequency is a straight line with a x intercept and y intercept. The x intercept gives the threshold frequency, y intercept gives the um, uh, that uh, work function of the material, but it should be taken negative uh, here because uh, sorry, it should be uh, de uh, deleted with negative. Uh, do not take negative because this is negative kinetic energy. The negative energy in the sense it is uh, bound and it is still inside the metal and if you want to remove it, you have to give positive energy. Then only it comes up. And the slope, slope of this gives, rem remember, slope of this straight line gives the Planck's constant. Why sir? See, what is the slope? Slope is y by x, right? So, I will take a larger triangle. What is y? It is kinetic energy of the photoelectrons. Kinetic energy depends on the supplied energy. More the supplied energy, more will be the kinetic energy. So, y delta y by delta x is the slope. Slow delta y by delta x is the slope and uh, that is equal to what is delta y? It is kinetic energy. So, shall I write it as h nu dimension wise and this is uh, what is delta x? That is frequency. So, dimension wise it is Planck's constant, right? I did not write the actual formula. Simply I wrote it uh, in terms of uh, dimensions. So, this slope of that straight line gives the Planck's constant, okay. Now, very important graphs here. Photoelectric current versus stopping potential for different frequencies, uh, sorry, different intensities, different intensity of incident light. You know that when intensity of light is increased, more electrons will be emitted and uh, more uh, uh, photoelectric current comes into picture. But all those electrons, when you increase the intensity of a source of light, what happens is you are increasing only the number of photons, but uh, photons are identical. When you just increase the brightness of a light, similar photons will be coming from the light, but their number is more. So, what will put the electrons emitted? They will have same kinetic energy. So, intensity of light does not change the kinetic energy of photoelectrons. It only increases the number of uh, photoelectrons, thereby increases the current. So, if you want to stop those electrons, when the light was lesser, brighter, what photons have been stopped by a stopping potential? When the light was made more brighter, same potential can stop the photoelectrons. Why? 
because when the light was made more brighter, similar photons were coming, but their number is more. So, yes, for example, a stopping potential of minus 4 volt can stop electrons when light, light is incident, means if it is made brighter, similar photons are coming. So, minus 4 volt can stop those electrons also. Their number may be more, no problem. Each photon is stopped by the stopping potential. So, when you change the intensity, the stopping potential doesn't change. Right? When the intensity of incident light is in changed, number of photons will change and that will change the in, uh, photoelectric current, not the kinetic energy of photoelectrons. More number of students will be going to their grandma's house, but the, uh, each student will not be given uh, more money, right? So numbers will be more. So when intensity is increased, stopping potential is same. But for smaller intensity, you will have smaller current leading. You know this one here, because uh, when uh, uh, I give uh, a stopping, but suppose this is uh, minus 3 volt, and this is minus 2 volt, this is minus 1 volt, this is 0, 1, 2, 3. When the, uh, that uh, anode potential is positive, electrons were emitted from the photosensitive surface and they reach the anode and you get a current. You get sufficiently larger current. But current depends on how many photons, uh, electrons are re released and they reach the anode. That is a constant. But as you increase the, uh, go to the reverse potential, of course, if you want to have that uh, diagram, a rough diagram like this, right? So here is the cathode and here is the anode and electrons will be going like this and uh, this is the incident light. When the intensity is more and more, more electrons will be emitted and in current will increase. So for a lesser brighter light, if this uh, four, minus 3 volt can stop, uh, stop the electrons, for more brighter light, minus 3 volt can stop those electrons because same kinetic energy uh, electrons will be coming back. So this will remain the same. But if you increase the brightness, what happens is it starts from the same stopping potential but curve comes here because when you increase the brightness, the photoelectric current will increase. And if you make the brightness very, very small, less brighter light, less number of photons will be falling, less electrons will be coming because they give energy to uh, less, uh, lesser number of electrons, they come out and uh, so the curve will land up here. But stopping potential is same. Have you followed it now? Now this one, uh, Einstein says this process, uh, photons and you have to take light as photons, not a wave. One photon will have some energy, another photon will have similar energy in a single light, monochromatic light. Uh, another photon, all the photons will have same type of energy. Einstein says it is a one to one correspondence. What do you mean by one to one correspondence? It is a one to one reaction. One photon goes and gives all its energy to electron and comes out. Photon has lost energy, incident light energy is converted into some other energy for the electron. Electron uses it to come out and converts it into kinetic energy, remaining energy. So, it is a one to one. So, one photon can remove only one electron. Suppose, you see, it is like this, you see, if, an, if a photon is having much, much more energy than what it is required to remove the electron, more than the work function, a photon has got, a radiation uh, has got uh, an energy which is five times the work function. That doesn't mean that. That photon, when it falls on an electron, it, uh, it, it has five times more energy, right? It removes one electron and that electron re uses some amount of energy to come out, remaining four times energy it has within it, right? It uses it as kinetic energy. It doesn't give that energy to the neighboring electron to come out. That is what I call one-to-one -one correspondence. If your father gives you 200 rupees, you are 210 rupees say, he gives you 210 rupees, you have three times more money than what it is required for traveling. What you will do? you will spend 70 rupees for traveling and remaining uh, what you have um, 140 rupees you will keep it in your pocket you will never give that 140 rupees to your neighbor and uh, you will carry him along with you you will we won't do that whatever money your father has given to you it is for you it is not for anybody else so one photon comes fall or gives the energy to elect one electron one electron uses all the energy and among them a small amount of energy is used to come out, remaining energy is kinetic energy. So that is why if you have one photon of more energy 
that energy is not distributed to another electron that you have to remember that is why it is one to one collision it is like a, a, a one marble going and one carom coin going and hitting to another coin it transfers all its energy to another coin seem the same way so uh, when you increase the intensity remember you are not increasing the energy of each photon you are giving the same energetic photon but their numbers are more when the numbers are more more electrons will come out that increases the uh, yeah, current but not kinetic energy right so that is one thing another graph yesterday uh, in the previous class we have seen this suppose if you increase the frequency so this is for different intensity intensity 1 intensity 2 intensity 3 which intensity is highest intensity 1 is greater than intensity 2 greater than intensity 3 this is uh, yeah yeah intensity 3 is the uh, uh, le very less intensity this is more uh, brighter light more photons more electrons but all electrons can be stopped by one stopping potential because all are same energetic now let us increase the frequency not brightness not intensity of light we will increase the frequency for different frequency we will do same light same brightness different frequency in, in the sense i change from uh, blue light to yellow yellow to green green to something something like this we will increase the frequency when the incident frequency is less what happens when the incident frequency is less the energy required to uh, rem uh, come out is same remaining energy is less when the incident frequency is more electrons are more energetic they will use the same energy to come out remaining energy will be more so when the frequency is increased kinetic energy of electrons goes on increasing now you require more and more stopping potential but photoelectric current will not change why when the photoelectric current depends on how many photons or how many electrons cross per second that depends on how many photons fall on the surface and how many photons fall on the surface depends on intensity but we are not changing the intensity we are changing the frequency when the frequency is increased we are keeping the same number of photons but each photon is made more and more energetic that's all 100 photons are falling means same 100 photons but make more uh, every photon more energetic more and more new more and more h new right so when the frequency is increased the remaining kinetic energy of the electrons will be more and more and that requires more and more stopping potential that means for lesser frequency the curve starts from here of course it will lead uh, to some uh, current because for uh, uh, minus 1 volt so minus 2 volt lesser frequency means minus 2 volt is enough to stop the electrons say and uh, when you come to minus volt, 1 volt some electrons may move and they will produce some current when the potential is 0 volt stopping potential is 0 volt and some more electrons can reach and produce current more current so this is current right and when the potential is sufficiently plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 you will get all the electrons reaching the anode and when this is plus because uh, plus attracts electrons so you will get sufficient amount of photoelectric current but if the frequency is increased now if you want to stop it minus 2 volt is not sufficient you have to go for minus 3 volt but it will land up with the same current why because you are not increasing the number of photons you are just increasing the frequency keeping the same number of photons you are increasing the kinetic energy and if you increase the frequency further what happens more stopping potential is needed so this is for new one this is for new two this is for new three frequency of incident radiation i am writing if the frequency is new one this should be more because stopping potential is more so new one is greater than new two greater than new three but all are leading to the same photoelectric current hope you have followed this graph this is very important right what is the difference between this and this this is for different brightness but same stopping potential that means intensity changes the current not the stopping potential that means intensity does not depend on the kinetic energy of photoelectrons their speed with which they move whereas uh, frequency changes the stopping potential that means incident frequency depends on or, or it changes the stopping stopping potential depends on the incident frequency it doesn't change the photoelectric current so this dependence is uh, explained now i will wrap this this is uh, uh, i will stop the explanation of the graphs but graphs are very important in the next class i will uh, put the notes on the uh, you have already got the notes i put it on the 
board and I will tell you how to write the answers. You have already questions and answers, same thing you have to write. Most important question in the exam here. What are Einstein's explanation on photoelectric effect? Okay, Einstein gave and said that this is nothing but law of conservation of energy. Whatever the energy is given in the form of light, that is given energy. It is used by the electrons to come out and to run as kinetic energy. So some of the energy as kinetic energy plus the energy to come out must be equal to supplied energy. So he gave that formula, he gave a formula under the law of conservation of energy. And you know, uh, this is the diagram, okay, this is enough for me now. Uh, this is cathode and this is anode and uh, this is made negative and this is positive and electrons will be moving like this and this is possible when light falls on this. Okay, this is enough for me. Now, Einstein gives one formula. H nu, if nu is the frequency of radiation which is incident, which is sufficiently strong enough to remove the electrons, remember nu greater than nu naught then it is equal to work function. What do you mean by work function? Energy required to remove plus kinetic energy of the electrons. And he writes it as maximum kinetic energy of electrons. What is this maximum kinetic energy? Because you must be able to stop the fastest electron also. If a stopping potential can stop the fastest electron itself, that means that electron which has come from the surface of the metal, it has used less energy to come out. It will have more energy remaining. You can, re you can stop that electron also means that potential can stop any electron then. So that is maximum kinetic energy of electrons. This is the equation given by Einstein. It is nothing but law of conservation of energy. Given energy, energy to come out, energy to move. So you have 80 rupees with you and 70 rupees uh, has been given for bus fare. 150 rupees is the money given by your father. Equation finished balanced now can you write this equation in any other form yes sir incident wavelength is given sir frequency is not given what i can do or, or for example work function we'll change work function sir i have been given threshold frequency the minimum frequency to remove the electron this frequency is greater than that so me if the minimum frequency is given then h nu naught because if uh, uh, the minimum frequency is given to the electron to come out, frequency is not energy. Convert it into energy. H nu. H nu naught plus half mv maximum square. This is another form of the equation. What is half mv maximum square? It is the maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectrons. Where m is the mass of the electron, v, is the mag v maximum is the maximum kinetic energy of photoelectrons. It, I think you have come to know why you have written maximum because we are interested in stopping the last electron also. You are the most energetic electron also. Then you can stop the uh, less energetic electrons, no problem. Okay. And uh, can I write it in the wavelength? Yeah, why not? If lambda is the wavelength of incident light and lambda naught is the threshold wavelength, you, say, you see you have so many definitions. Threshold wavelength, a threshold frequency, stopping potential, work function, you must be very clear with all these words. Sc by lambda naught plus half mv maximum square, you can write it like this or I can write it like this also, this one, h nu is equal to h nu naught plus, you know, what is the kinetic energy of photoelectrons? How can you measure it? You know it. What you have to do is, when the electrons are coming like this, try to stop them. Who will stop them? Reverse the anode potential. Make it negative. What is the maximum potential that it can stop it? And potential difference is work done in taking the charges. What is work done? Charge into potential. Charge is E, stopping potential is V naught. So these three formulas or four formulas that must be at the tip of your tongue. You must be knowing to convert any form into other. Work function, H nu naught. Stopping potential, yeah, sorry, a kinetic energy, half m maximum square, or E V naught. Supplied energy, H nu, or S C by lambda. Work function, S C by lambda naught. Any way you must be able to write. And I will take this equation, right? So what is the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons? Kinetic energy maximum is equal to uh, H nu, I will, I will take this one, H nu minus H nu naught kinetic energy maximum so mag what energy you have within your pocket what the money mother uh, sorry pa father has given minus the bus fare right kinetic energy maximum is h into nu minus nu naught right this is the formula 
Of course, this is the formula, this is the, any formula is Einstein's formula. Now, Einstein starts giving the explanation. Why Henry Church, Leonard and Hallwalk observed that phenomena? Why did they come to know like this? Now you have to take light as a particle, not as a wave. If you take light as a wave, what happens is, suppose there is an electron, and if you put a radiation of suitable frequency on that uh, material, electrons start absorbing the energy. What is a wave? Continuous form of energy. It is not a packet of energy. It is a continuous form of energy. Energy is supplied continuously. If that radiation, H nu, is not enough to remove the electron, let the electron wait for a while. Let the energy come and uh, in series, uh, let it uh, 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 collect the enough amount of energy and then come out. But it doesn't happen so practically. Practically, if you observe, if you put a ray of light uh, with the lesser, lesser frequency, for a long time, electrons don't come. It is as if, uh, suppose a, a, a kid is in the well, right? And uh, he, he has to be removed up, right? You have to send a sufficiently stronger person to pull him out, isn't it? And that person must be able to put the whole energy within a time and pull the kid out. Sir, why can't I send a smaller person so that he can send the energy or he can spend the energy for a long time and he can do that? No, it is not possible. If you can put the energy all at once, you can do it. But if you have lesser energy, why can't you do the work for a longer time and take him out? Not possible. If you want to pull him, you have to pull him at once, right? You can pull him today uh, for uh, uh, one feet above and leave him. And tomorrow you eat well and come and again uh, pull him to uh, one feet above. And little by little, one feet by one feet. You can't do that work that, uh, like that. You have to pull him all at once out of the pit, out of the well, isn't it? Otherwise, it is not possible. So, you must select a person who is having sufficient energy and who can pull the kid all at once from the well. That is the way in which you have to uh, think of here. If you take light as a wave, wave theory fails here. How does it fail? Because according to wave theory, light is a continuous form of energy. If, uh, a, if a wave of certain frequency nu cannot remove electron means, Continuously put that light for a long time. Let the electron collect the energy. When the collection is sufficient, it will come out. That is what wave theory says. Not possible. If you put a light radiation for a long time, electron doesn't come out. Only suitable radiation, if it is put, no time is required. Immediately it comes out. Time gap involved between the light falling on the surface and electron coming out is only nanoseconds. Light falls on the uh, surface. Electrons come out within that, within no time, 10 to the power minus 8 seconds to my, 10 to the power minus 9 seconds because there should be an interaction, isn't it? The light should interact with the, the electron, electron has to absorb the energy and it has to come, come out. So there is a small in, uh, time gap involved and that is 10 to the power minus 9 seconds. So you need not wait for a longer time. That means wave theory cannot explain photoelectric effect. Quantum theory can explain. How could it explain? Einstein says it is a particle-particle collision, light is a particle as told by Max Planck, the quantum theory is correct and quantum theory could explain the photoelectric effect very well and when light is taken as a packet of energy, if that each packet of energy is having sufficient amount of energy, it can fall on the surface and can remove the electrons. That is the simplest explanation. So if that energy is not sufficient, of course electrons don't come. And if you put that radiation for a long time, never. Every packet should have enough amount of energy. Every person here should be able to put the kid out. And he can't uh, wait for a longer time and today eating something uh, uh, and uh, pulling in uh, by one feet, tomorrow eating again and pulling in by one feet. Not possible. That is a very bad way of working. You can't expect it. So, one photon hits another electron. It is like particle-particle collision. Suppose you have a ball on the table. Or if you have a carom coin on the carom table, she hit the striker. As soon as the striker hits the carom coin, carom coin moves out and the striker comes to rest. Because striker transfers all its energy to the carom coin, carom coin moves out. What is the interaction time involved? Very less. Does the carom coin wait for a longer time and let the striker hit me and after one hour I will start moving? Will it do like that? No. As soon as the striker hits, the coin moves forward. 
or will it will the carom coin move forward earlier itself however the striker is going to come and hit me let me run now only no not possible it is not possible only when the interaction is done it is gone that is why einstein says light is a packet of energy it is a okay a packet of photons and you can take them as a particle when those photons fall on the electrons it is like a particle particle collision photons hit the electrons electrons absorb the energy of the photons if it is sufficient only then they will absorb the energy and they come out first answer given it is an instantaneous process since it is a particle particle collision it is an instantaneous process how much time is needed for the electrons to absorb the energy from photons and come out 10 to the power minus 9 seconds it is like transition of electrons from different energy levels if an electron absorbs energy and goes to the higher energy level comes back and gives the energy in the form of light how much time is needed nanoseconds 10 to the power minus 8 to 10 to the power minus 9 seconds very less so first answer that is gone next Hallwerk, Leonard, and uh, Henry Church say they together worked it, but practical observations were done by Hallwerk and Leonard. Now they say that incident uh, intensity of light controls the photoelectric current, and photoelectric current doesn't depend on the frequency of incident light, right? Frequency of incident light is uh, not controlling photoelectric current. it is obvious because you see here in the formula you have frequency of incident light and the threshold frequency we don't have current at all that equation doesn't contain current at all when you increase the intensity brightness why does photoelectric current increase of course i have that explanation i have given already einstein says when you increase the intensity of incident light according to quantum theory you are increasing the number of photons you are bringing more and more people who are energetic right more number of people can take out more kids all at once one by one right so each person can remove one kid 10 people means 10 kids out 100 people means 100 kids out each photon interacts with one electron only it cannot interact with another electron so each photon interacts with then one electron and removes that electron so when that electron is removed one electron has come out so more intensity means more the number of photons falling on the surface more number of photons will remove more number of electrons when more electrons flow through the uh, this anode and all you get more current and it has nothing to do with kinetic energy because when you increase the intensity you are increasing the number of photons not the energy of the photons okay but increasing frequency doesn't change the current because this equation doesn't contain current at all this contains frequency it's red frequency there is no current at all there is no equation uh, that uh, the uh, term representing the current in this equation so uh, photoelectric current is independent of frequency okay that explanation is given then hallwerk and lenard and hertz say that there is a minimum frequency above which photoelectric emission can take place there is a minimum amount of money that you need to travel if you are given 50 rupees you simply reject it i don't go to grandma's house because that is not enough so there is a minimum frequency above which only photoelectric emission can take place below which it cannot right there is a train going and you can hear the sound natural class so there is a minimum frequency above which photoelectric emission take place below which photoelectric emission cannot take place if you incident a frequency less than threshold frequency what happens electrons remain inside the material only you know it right they don't come out because they are bound that energy is not enough to come out now it can be beautifully explained in this formula if nu is less than nu not what happens to this right hand side what happens to the right hand side of the equation it becomes negative if the incident frequency is lesser than the threshold frequency the right hand side equation which represents kinetic energy becomes negative what do you mean by kinetic energy becoming negative kinetic energy becoming negative means electrons have not come out still they are inside and they have not been free from the metal so electrons cannot come out and if nu is greater than nu not what does this equation say that equation says that uh, the kinetic energy is positive that means electrons have come out if nu is equal to nu not what happens 
when nu is equal to nu naught, you have been given only 70 rupees, only what is needed. And what about the amount of money that is left with when you get down from the bus in near your grandma's house? Zero, no money is left. Similarly, when nu is equal to nu naught, kinetic energy becomes zero. What is, what is the meaning of that? Electrons have just come out of the material and they have just uh, zero energy. They have used all energy to come out because you have supplied only that much. So, kinetic energy maximum becomes zero. This is beautifully explained in this formula, you see. So, that is why the Einstein got Nobel Prize, right? Even Hallwerk Leonard and uh, uh, Hertz didn't get the Nobel Prize. Max Planck, of course, he didn't get Nobel Prize for this. And it is his theory and uh, experiment of uh, uh, Henry Charles. But Einstein got the Nobel Prize. So beautiful explanation saying that if nu is greater than nu naught, this becomes positive, electrons can come out. If nu is equal to nu naught, right hand side is zero. That means electrons have just come out. They don't have any energy remaining. And if nu is less than nu naught, right side, right side uh, that kinetic energy becomes negative, which means kinetic energy cannot be negative. Electrons are still inside. They can't come out. So that means they are here, right? Still negative. And if uh, nu is less than nu naught, for any frequency less than nu naught, this is negative. So they are inside, they haven't come out. So this is how the Einstein gave explanation on photoelectric effect. And uh, so nu naught is the minimum frequency above which photoelectric can take place. And uh, so uh, you, you may be asked to uh, write this also, the Einstein's explanations, right? Um, uh, you have that notes, just look into that. So I will just recap it once. First one, why it is instantaneous process? Because Einstein says it is a particle-particle collision. Take light as a particle, that is photon, packet of energy. That falls on electron. Electron receives it and uh, comes out. So that is why it is instantaneous. As carom coins hit and other carom coins pull, it is an instantaneous process. The time in, uh, involved for the interaction is very less. And um, what, uh, what is the next explanation? Why don't uh, uh, the brightness, intensity of light change kinetic energy? Because kinetic energy equation doesn't contain intensity at all. Then how come kinetic energy depend on intensity? When the brightness is increased, when the intensity is increased, you get more photoelectric current but not the kinetic energy because kinetic energy equation is independent of intensity. There is no term representing intensity here. Then, um, when the frequency is, of course, greater than threshold frequency, right hand side is positive. When the frequency is uh, less than threshold frequency, right hand side is uh, negative. That means electrons have not come out. When the two frequencies are equal, if the incident frequency is just the threshold, then the kinetic energy becomes zero, which means uh, uh, electrons have just come out. They don't have any remaining energy. They have used all energy to uh, come out. So these uh, four or five points, why it is instantaneous, what is threshold frequency or wavelength and uh, why the kinetic energy doesn't depend on intensity and uh, why the kinetic energy depends on stopping potential. Of course, you can replace it as EV0. This is here. Kinetic energy depends on stopping potential and everything is explained. So this is uh, the main theme. So you may get questions like uh, explain hallwerk Leonard uh, observations on photoelectric effect and um, mm, uh, what are Einstein's explanations on photoelectric effect? Explain different graphs, frequency versus uh, kinetic energy. And of course, you can draw one more frequency versus stopping potential because stopping potential is a measure of kinetic energy, right? EV0 is kinetic energy. So shall I uh, replace this with the stopping potential for different frequencies? More the frequency, more will be the stopping potential. Curve will be same. But only the thing is this uh, is not a work function. It is work function by Planck's constant. But uh, this is a threshold frequency. So graph is same, stopping potential versus frequency because if you multiply by E, you will get uh, kinetic energy. So all these equations, you must be very familiar with that. And in this chapter, from this chapter onwards, I will give you the assignment, right? You have to write it and you have to put it in the WhatsApp and you have to show it to me. I don't know how much uh, punctual you may be in showing it. All the people may show the same. Uh, 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 that uh, um, uh, notes, but you have to write it because this is a part of a chapter physics uh, in second view. This is a part where you need more writing. You have to write it properly because more uh, sentences have to be written. No much derivations. Understanding concept is very important, but very very important part. And in the next class we will uh, work out some problems and then we will move on to actual dual nature uh, uh, that uh, wavelength matter wave. That, we, that finishes this small chapter, but very important chapter, okay? Thanks for watching my class. 
um, uh, um, take care of your health and at the same time work well because don't waste time and once the classes start I don't know how fast it will move you will not get time for anything right no relaxation afterwards so keep in touch with the subject thanks for watching my class we will meet in the next class thank you